Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I'm Vire, and since last time, I did do a lot of farming. Um, I've got 44 large Titanite shards. I uh, did get a bunch of souls from it. Uh, it was enough to upgrade my Pyromancy Flame to an Ascended Pyromancy Flame plus 5. I uh, said I was going to do even more farming, though. Uh, particularly on, like, really skeletons or whatever, but Demon Ruins would probably actually be a better place to farm. But then I realized that I hadn't shown off this elevator or its contents for real. I mean, I kind of showed it a little bit when I came down here in my shame episodes, where uh, I was playing a stunt double so I could show you Quay Lag and ceaseless discharge since I screwed up the recording <laughs> but uh, you know I didn't get all the items here I also think I missed the ninja set in conventional blight town so I'll have to go back there at some point but uh, For now, I'll, just, I'll show you this exit sort of area. Hear that tinking as, uh, as the blow dart fellows. Here we get a sorcery, we get a Chandler's set. It's a pretty good lightweight set. It has better defenses than the Isolith set. And I think around the same weight. Uh, if a little bit heavier and a little bit lighter in s some spots. It's one of the few armor sets that has curse resistance. And uh, you start with the master key, you can come down here and get this right away. Uh, Crimson Robe. Robe of the sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal away the Dark Wraiths, and the Four Kings descended into Dark. The sealers were once known as healers, and the bright crimson was a symbol of that. So in Dark Souls, Red Mages are just healers. What is this, Final Fantasy XI? Nah, I'm only kidding. Though, Final Fantasy XI, Red Mages did, for the most part, uh, heal, so. At least in EXP, so. You know. It's kind of what happens when, uh, they give your job the best MP efficiency and they give you the second strongest cures. I know. Can I get toxic? Yeah, that'd be okay. Now I can't get toxic again. There's a lot of these guys in here. I recommend just bringing a lot of healing items and letting them get you toxic, because their darts don't deal any actual damage to you other than the toxic. So as long as you just heal up before you're, you know, about to die, you'll be fine. Of course, if you really don't want to be toxic, just bring the spider shield and try to time ranged attacks or sorceries or something. Like that. That's trying to go straight down. Yeah, whatever. Remember, these orange dogs can breathe fire, so if you can kill them from up here, that would be ideal. There's a lot of these orange dogs down here, by the way. But they have a pretty low aggro range, so, like, you really don't have to get close to them. Here we get another Firekeeper Soul. Does this one say anything different? Yeah, go ahead and heal the, uh... Toxic. 
Let's see, does it say anything different? This Firekeeper Soul. Nope, it doesn't. Interesting thing about that Firekeeper Soul is even if you haven't done the bosses down in Blight Town, and even if you haven't like properly descended all the way into Blight Town, if you come down here and get that particular Firekeeper Soul, and you've already got plus two Estus flasks, and you bring it back to Firelink Shrine to try to have it upgraded, well, yeah, something will happen that uh, you don't want to happen for as long as you can prevent it. So. Also, if I sound a little bit different in this video, it's because I'm laying down. I was trying to go to sleep, but our new dog really, really loves me. And I love that, but I need to sleep. And, uh, because I work at night. And so she's, she's been having a fit, and I've been trying to keep her out of my room. <laughs> Key to New Londo Roads. You can just run past these guys really easily, but uh, I owe them a few revenge kills, let's say, from all the times I've run down here and master key playthrough and got unfortunate with your swing pattern or just, you know, wasn't paying well enough attention. They get me. Ow. They're actually incredibly weak to bleed. So if you start as the bandit, you know, you hit the bandit's knife, and you can actually just come down here and, like, farm them if you wanted to with a combination of backstabs and, uh, just bleeding them out. Here we come to Valley of Drakes. Like, the rapper? No, no. I mean Drakes. There's some Drakes down here, and, uh, well... You can get some dragon scales here. You can actually farm dragon scales here. Uh, if you're one of the offline only types of people and you don't want to do a bunch of dragon honor duels with other players, you can just come here and farm. I think they, if you have the maximum item find, you have like about a one-fifth chance per drake kill. And the drakes are actually fairly challenging to kill, so um, it'll take you a good bit. But there's, there's a pretty good bonfire nearby. Um, this particular drake, he doesn't respawn, but uh, we wouldn't want him to anyway. I don't think I brought him up. I should have ignored stuff to come here while power with him was still active. He's 
spaces left to pull it though. You get the Astora Straight Sword and the Dragon Crest Shield. And the Astora Straight Sword is actually pretty dang good starting equipment. You can come down here right at the start of the game and get the Master Key and get it. It's a divine weapon, so it's got uh, magical damage on it. All divine weapons possess magical type damage. That scales off of your faith. Um, you can deal the physical damage from this weapon uh, despite not having the faith requirement, although I think you'll still swing it funny, or a little funny, maybe not. But yeah, you won't get the magic damage out of it. Uh, and you see that down in auxiliary effects next to the uh, white circle emblem, it has a 120 auxiliary effect. That's uh, divine damage and it's like uh, extra attack rating addition against skeletons uh, necromancers uh, and certain like specially undead like you know like occult types type enemies or whatever so that can be pretty nice nothing to uh, really stress out about though it's completely optional if you want to take advantage of it or not let's see so I'll grab that also uh, as far as that zombie dragon goes if you do come down here and get the store straight sword and the dragon crest shield and the dragon crest shield by the way has uh, Got a lot of fire resistance, 85%. And uh, it is also in a storm shield. But if you do come down here to get those, if you pick them up uh, before the dragon is awake, so to speak, it will awaken and aggro you. But the soul of a proud knight that spies paw, uh, picking that up, it won't aggro you. Coming down this way, here's a blue drake. They're pretty rough customers. See, they got a lot of HP. They're worth a thousand souls, but with how hard they are to kill and the fact that there are multiple of them down here that can aggro you at the same time, plus the sheer cliff drop-offs, it's usually better to just run by them. They can also sweep up into the air. They can uh, spray lightning at you from the air. They can. They can also swoop off the cliff themselves. Uh, as you can see, their bite attack hurts pretty good. They don't ever have to stop either. It's, uh, I don't usually fight them. I usually just run by them. And my advice for fighting them would be to fight them at a long range with like a bow or your magic or faith. Probably, he might kill me. <laughs> and that lightning, it travels. Yeah, see, they have a pretty good chance at dropping dragon scales. Uh, let's see. 
overplaying my hand here again. Really should have just ran by. Here you get the brigand set, including the spider shield. That's the second place you can get a spider shield. Here you can get the red tier stone ring. It's pretty much the opposite of the blue tier stone ring. It boosts your attack while HP is low. That means when your HP is, you know, at critical levels. And this red tier stone ring features in pretty much every no hit run, every, uh, you know, like challenge run almost, because of just how much it uh, raises your attack power. Basically, though, you know, it makes sense, like, it raises your attack power by such a high degree. As long as you don't care about getting hit or killed in one hit, it will save you. Kind of careful when you come up this uh, path here. It's imp it's possible to run a little too fast and sort of slope off accidentally. So something you always want to watch out for in this Soul series, except in Sekiro, really. Like Sekiro, you could sprint all day long across anything, and obviously he can jump and like Spider-Man onto stuff practically everywhere in that game. So. I don't know exactly where I'm going to end this video, but I do want to try to get to where I can show you what I'm going to be farming souls for. This elevator shaft has actually killed me more than, probably more than half the bosses in the game. The amount of times I've run into this elevator shaft, both at the bottom and top, because I forgot where the actual lift part of it was. And I don't know how to do that fancy glitch thing where you like, medium roll into no not taking any fall damage. Too advanced for me, not... And also, honestly, not really worth learning. For me, anyways. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got the Denji set, and a black eye orb. The Firekeeper's nowhere to be seen. Worn by Firekeeper at Firelink Shrine. It's thought to have once been the white robe of a maiden, but smoke and ashes from bonfires have darkened it over the years. The Black Eye Orb. Invade world of murderer of firekeeper. Mystical orb found on a keeper's corpse. Invade that world of the murderer for Firekeeper, defeat the perpetrator, and reclaim the soul of the Firekeeper. The Black Eye keeps constant watch on the City of the Gods in Orlando. Okay. Uh-oh. No bonfire for us at Firelink.
Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now we have a new problem. It's noisy, it snores, and its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Damn, that stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. Oh, maybe it's time I do something about it. Oh, maybe. I wonder what he could be talking about. Oh, it's good. These things still freak me out a little bit. Ah, hello. Was it you who rang the Bell of Awakening? I am the Primordial Serpent, King Seeker Fract, close friend of the Great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the Bell of Awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Yeah, I guess so. Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? Now, Framped here, you can feed him Titanite, and basically, when you do that, you see his big old choppers, they break it. They, they, they break into smaller pieces, like if you were to feed him large Titanite, it would turn into a normal Titanite. Same thing with green Titanite. You fed him a Titanite chunk, it'd turn into large Titanite. Blue Titanite would turn into, I think, large Titanite? Either that it was green Titanite. I think it's green. I think it's green Titanite for anything that's a colored Titanite. And if you feed in the slab, it'll turn into chunks. But you can also feed them items. And basically, this is the only place you can really turn in items for souls in this game, as far as I know. Any items you don't want, you can just feed to them. He likes dunk pies. <laughs> Don't feed him your souls. He doesn't... He doesn't, uh... Give you a good exchange rate on souls. But you can also feed him... Weapons. And this is why I didn't get the... Uh... What you call it? Bottomless box? Because I was just going to feed all my duplicate weapons to Framed. Or any weapons that I straight up just don't want. So. Help a little bit with the farming, but not not too much. the standard set.
I think that's all I want to feed him. Those who seek the realm of lords must brave Sen's fortress, a deadly house of traps. Many have gone before you, but none have returned. Fate has chosen you, but proceed with caution. Those who seek met fate. Farewell, chosen undead. I remain here and await thee. Now, if you were to try to hit him, unfortunately, he wouldn't become a boss, even though they had programmed in, I think, some attack moves for him. They just decided in the finished game to make him go away if, if you were to become hostile, so. You hit him, he'll be like, Oh, I was a fool to think you could have been the one. And then he just leaves. Which, then, you know, you don't actually need to bother with the serpent at all. And you can totally do that before you even talk to him. You can just be an asshole and be like, Hey, get the fuck out of here. Because, uh... Turns out he's just a bit of exposition. So. But you remember that gate that was shut earlier that Sigmire was sitting by waiting? And oh, how he was waiting. That's where we gotta go. Kind of make this bonfire your home bonfire when uh. <sighs> ah, why that's a fine ember you have there. I could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? Of course, magnificent. You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. Now, part part of the stuff I want to save up for is I want to I want to upgrade a bunch of weapons to plus ten, and I also want to obviously buy you know some. Upgrade items. So that's part of what I want to farm for. But there's a little more to it than that. Not. I'm not sure exactly how much time is left in the video, so hopefully I can get a little ways into Sun's Fortress to show you what I really want to save up for. Let's see, I want fall control, I want... 